Love Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim J.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of The Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of The Core Business Show, Tim Jacquet. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Core Business Show. I'm Tim Jacquet, your host. Today, I have the pleasure of having Brandon Gage. He is the author, Risk is the New Say, The Rules Have Changed. We're going to discuss this book in the next few minutes, over the next 15 minutes. If you would like to join the conversation, please call in at 347-324-3460. Again, 347-324-3460. Or you can post a question in the chat room, or you can email us at info at thecorebusinessshow.com. We'll be back in a moment with Randy at the station break. You're listening to The Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to the core. Once again, here's Tim Jacquet. Welcome back, everyone. Randy, welcome to the program. Hey, great to be on with you, Tim. I guess to begin with, our audience really loves to hear personal stories of, about the people we have on the program. So, am I? Just tell us about yourself and how you get started in writing this book. Well, it's interesting because it's funny. I'm working on the sequel with the agent now, and they're saying, "Well, you're not a futurist." You're not a trend guy. <laughs> You're not an economist. You're not a academic. You're not a statistician. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> I said, I'm just a guy who learned how to make some money. <laughs> there you go. And that's what drove me to write the book. Is I'm looking. I wanted to show the practical application side of finding hidden opportunities. That'd be the wow. best way I could. I can describe it, I think. And tell us about your background. Where are you from and how you got into business? I grew up in Madison, Wisconsin, single mother who raised three kids, knocking by herself, knocking on doors, selling Avon. So I was always poor. I wanted to, like when I started in the restaurant business as a dishwasher and cook and worked my way up, you know, did some network marketing, direct selling stuff. Made some money there, lost it again in the restaurant business. So a lot of fits and starts along the way before I kind of, you know, before I really started. To, it took me till I was probably 35 to figure things out. Wow. Is there a particular thing that in business that if you had to throw out there, of course you want to keep trying until you get it right. Is there one particular thing that's really stood out that kept you going? Say, I'm going to try until... There's nothing left in me. Yeah, you have to be the biggest investor in your dream. You have to be the biggest believer in your dream. And when I say I figured it out, I don't mean I figured everything out. I mean, at least by the time I was 35, I was a millionaire. And that was my goal was, you know, because I was, you know, I grew up poor my whole life. I hated being poor. And so the only thing that was my vision was I I always said I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 35. And coincidentally, right, that's when I became a millionaire. So, but you have to be, believe in yourself before you ask anyone else. And it's tough. It's hard. It's lonely. But if you're an entrepreneur, you don't have any other choice. You just know that is what you do and you do it. When you talk about lonely, I've heard this from a lot of small business owners, even when they even made it where they want to be, it seemed as lonely at the top. Why is that? Because 
you're an artist and the artist is the loneliest person on earth because wow. you're fake and I'll tell you what I'm, I, I'm just actually this is the I, I was just writing the epilogue or, no not the epilogue the prologue the prologue to my next book which is a sequel to Risky is the New Safe I'm relating the story I was doing a a business development congress in Ljubljana Slovenia for all of you know we had people coming from all over Europe for this business development congress and I'm doing it with a guy named Nicholas Hyatt who was the founder of the Swatch Watch group and it's, he's like the guy who single-handedly rescued the Swiss, Swiss watch industry. And at that time, he was, I mean, he had 16 different brands all competing against themselves. He was worth about $3 billion at that point. He was in his 70s, probably mid-70s. But, it, you know, it didn't mellow him. He's not one of those people who mellowed with success. He was this blunt, brash, you know, uh, gruff-talking guy. And so we're doing a, uh, a, a press, what do you call it, a, a news conference for the event. Mm-hmm. This young reporter says to him, you know, you got all this, you've done all this, you know, you're not getting any younger, you know, when are you going to retire? And he looks at him, you know, and he looked like the guy had just, you know, tried to rape his mother. right? And he says, entrepreneurs are artists (laughs) and artists never retire. <laughs> and in that exact instant, I knew two truths of my to the very fiber of my soul. Number one was I would go to the rest, of the, you know, to my grave, wishing I was the first person who had ever spoken those words. <laughs> and number two, now I had a, had a label. I knew how to make sense of how I felt about being an entrepreneur and what drove me to be an entrepreneur. Wow. That's a compelling story. You'd taken all of this and you written other books, I'm assuming, and then you wrote this particular book. What compelled you to write this particular book, The Risk is in Experience? I was going to Phuket, Thailand. Wanted to do a one thing on my bucket list. I wanted to ride an elephant to the rainforest. And when I was there, I came across a place where they were training monkeys to harvest coconuts to replace human laborers. That was a interesting thing, kind of caught my attention. I mean, yes, we use animals for beasts of burden, but these guys, these monkeys are going to take the place of humans who are doing these jobs now. Very same trip, way home, I'm in the airport. I meet a couple with a little carrier. They had the first cloned puppy that had ever come to the United States. And I played with that puppy. And that was the most normal, adorable puppy like you would find at any animal shelter you would want to go rescue. And to know that puppy was a clone and see how normal he was and realize, you know, where does this lead and what does this mean to human cloning and what does this mean to genetic engineering? What does this mean to the job market and what does this mean to relationships and what does this mean to the economy? And that was the rabbit hole that I went down in Risky is the New Safe. It's all of these cataclysmic changes that we're going to be going through in the next 15 years, not 50 years, 15 years, some of them in two or three years, and all of the tremendous challenges that they're creating, but of course, the wonderful and very lucrative opportunities that are going to come as a result of each of those challenges. Wow. Wow, cloning. (laughs) When you look at those particular challenges, you you address this actually in your overview, sure, at the beginning of your book about the cloning, where do you see with this risky the new save in cloning and finding other sources of labor like training monkeys to do the work of humans? How do you look at that with a small business today? I know for years we were looking at automation, or are we going to begin to just look at different ways of getting things done in order to cut the work for, to shrink the workforce in one sense, or are they just going to be a little bit more inventive how they do things? Well, it's going to affect every business in the world from big multinational companies to the local hardware store. You know, Jones and Sons 
can clone more sons, why are they going to hire more employees? <laughs> They're not, right? So, and it, everyone, even you say, okay, well, we're not two years away or three years away from human cloning working in the hardware store. That's true. But the effects of genetic engineering, the effects of cloning, the effects of cloud, the effect of mobile, the effect of social media affects every business in the world right now. And I mean, those, and if you look at mobile apps, they change everything about marketing that you've ever known. If you've been a marketing major for the last 20 years, if you've been practicing marketing for 20 years, it doesn't matter. All those rules just got blown up because of social media and especially mobile and what mobile is capable of doing for local. And then if you look at branding, same thing. Branding is so, whatever you knew about branding before, trying to monitor your brand, protect your brand, blow it all up because social media does that. Web 3.0 has eviscerated all the rules. So whether you're a beauty salon, whether you're a chiropractor, whether you're an accountant, well, now you're going to say, well, does it, do I need a mobile app? How do I get local business? Okay, yeah, there's internets, there's search engines, everything's moving to the cloud. I get there's a lot of this tech stuff and these tech terms that I don't even know what the hell do they mean, but how does that affect my business? How does it translate for me to get business as a local chiropractor, as a local accountant, as an attorney. And that's where the biggest wealth opportunities are going to be over the next three, four years. Wow. So when you look at that, for the, it's kind of scary in one sense because now technology is getting to the point that it's moving so fast that the average person can't really keep up. Now, the new generation who's used to all these mobile devices is second nature to them. Are part of the nature in one sense, but if you're looking at the look at the 40 plus who's been doing things a certain way, who's been trained to do things a certain way, it don't be a sense of how can you adapt and keep up because if you just close your eyes for you know six months, I mean the world has just passed you by. The world will pass you by in six months with the exponentially accelerating speed of change in so many of these things now. And that's why I wrote Risky. Risky is really a game plan to say, okay, how can we look at the trends that are happening in our field? Whatever your field is, okay, what are the hard trends versus the soft trends? What are the things that, you know, where will this take us? Okay, what kind of problems will that create? Because if we can know what the problems are going to be, then we know where all the opportunities are. And if you really, if you can, if you distill the difference and understand the difference between hard trends and soft trends and cyclical trends, you know, like cyclical real estate goes up, goes down, currencies go up, go down, those are cyclical trends. And then there's hard trends. You know, the ease of accessibility of broadband, that's a hard trend. That's going to continue. The price of broadband is going to continue to get lower and lower. That's a hard trend. So once you do that, you really can foresee the future with a shocking degree of clarity. And once you know the future, now you know what the opportunities will be. And you can be two steps ahead of your competitor because you really can see around the corner because you can use the data to get you there. Well, in the act two of your book, you talk about the only free cheese is in the mousetrap? Yeah. <laughs> the uh, And that's really my core philosophy on prosperity. The only free cheese in the mousetrap. And to, just to sum up, we have so many entitlement programs in government right now that are running amok, destroying the work ethic. We have so many people looking for the shortcut. So many people like, hey, I watched The Secret 27 times and my yacht hasn't pulled right up in the harbor for me yet. You know, how many times do I have to watch this movie anyway? Uh, you know, we got to blow up that kind of thinking and we got to realize that prosperity is created by adding value and solving problems. And if you add value or solve problems, you will create wealth. Wow. And then you go into the new religion of ideas. Yeah. And the economy now and where we're going from this point forward, ideas are going to be the most sought after currency in the world because that's where innovation comes from, ideas. Inventions come from ideas. Cures to terminal diseases come from ideas. 
progress comes from ideas. So that chapter in the book is really a manifesto because I think the education system in the West is completely breaking down or already broken. It's kind of a manifesto to, for people that you've got to take charge of your own learning and you've got to become an idea generator. And the people who can do this and are willing to do the work and become critical thinkers, they're going to be free agents, just like you see with basketball and football and baseball stars, where they're going to be the most sought after employees in the world. They're going to be able to write their own ticket because the really savvy companies are going to go after these people. And the really smart HR directors, the successful ones, those will be the ones who create the most attractive, lucrative, free agent acquisition packages. I mean, look what Google will do right now to get the right engineer. You're going to see that in all kind of fields, all across the spectrum, as people realize the most important resource in our company is the minds of the people, the ideas that we generate from the people that we attract. And, you know, companies give lip service to that kind of thing now, but they don't really get it. And they're going to have to really get it. Wow. We're going to take a break real quick, and we'll be back in a moment. We're talking to Randy Cage, writing his new book, A Risk is a New Safe. We'll be back in 10 seconds. You're listening to The Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Again, we're back with Randy Cage. In the end of your book, I think you're talking about the uh, harnessing the ego for success. It kind of tells about that particular chapter. Yeah, that's one of the chapters. Some of the reviewers, they, they don't know what to go, where to go with that because there's so much talk. The ego is bad. The ego is edging God out. What I'm doing in that chapter is looking at the process for how high level achievers, entrepreneurs, artists, anywhere, sports, how they harness the power of the ego for a higher purpose and actually use ego in a very healthy way. And I think that's really required for high levels of success. And at the end, you say the after party kind of tells about the sameness. It creates comfort. You've got to get uncomfortable, right? Sameness mm-hmm. creates comfort, but difference creates opportunity. You've got to be bold. You've got to be brash. You've got to be a contrarian. And it's funny, I have a YouTube channel, and I did a show on this a couple of Actually, this week, I think it's just out now. It's called Be Crazy. Because, you know, most people say, well, you got to fit in and don't, act, you know, don't rock the boat and the tall poppy gets cut first and keep your head below the cubicle. But keep something in mind. Most people are broke. Most people are not very happy. Most people are not very healthy. So why would you want to be like most people? You don't. And, but your listeners, I don't have to tell them that. I mean, they're entrepreneurs. They know entrepreneurs are a different breed. We're not like most people. And that's why we're entrepreneurs. Wow. Entrepreneurs are artists. In closing, one thing you would like to leave our listeners with regarding this particular book. I want you to understand it's not a gloom and doom book. It's a dearth of opportunities book. It's a handbook for how to harness the future how to harness your future, how to find the opportunities that are swirling around you right now because there's never been a better time to create wealth. There's never been a better time to go from broke to multimillionaire or multi-billionaire than right now because of all these changes taking place right now. And I hope people really read the book and put it into practice because this is the moment to do it. Wow. Do you think it's easier today to start a business versus 10 or 15 years ago? A million times easier. It's cheaper, the technology, it's easier, it's faster, it's more scalable, all the connections, the internet, the networking. I mean, it's just crazy how much easier, simpler, cheaper, faster it is to start up a business today than any time we've been alive. Wow. How can people reach out to you? I know you have a of course, you mentioned you have a website, you have also not only a website, you have a YouTube channel. If not, just tell us how to contact you. 
Yeah, I'm all over. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and my main site is randygage.com. If you want to know more about the book, I've got some some teleseminars and interviews and articles and everything at riskyisthenewsafe.com. Perfect. Risky is the new safe. Randy, thank you for coming on the program. Hey, Tim. Great to be on with you. Great. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you again. Take care. Bye-bye. Again, everybody, thank you for listening. It's Tim Jacquet. You listen to the Core Business Show. You can download this episode on iTunes and Block Talk Radio or on your local radio station. Thank you for listening. Everybody, have a great weekend. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to the core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to the Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.